I'm so honored to be considered uh, for this opportunity to talk to all of you. Um, thank you for everyone who organized this and everyone with the amazing people in our athletic department. Um, thank you, Molly, uh, Gary Walters, um, Anthony Archibald, Craig Saxon, Allison Rich, Kelly Widener, all these people that I've gone to, uh, and got to know well over the past uh, five years. Um, also, thank you, Coach Ayers uh, and Coach Gray and Coach Dubuque and Coach Heflin for, uh, for nominating me for this. I'm glad that after five years of being a, a thorn in your side, you uh, actually still think enough of me to be up here. Um, and also, and I'll speak for a lot of us, thank you for uh, the entire athletic training staff for keeping us together over uh, the, the many injuries that all of us uh, sustain. Special shout out to Shelby. Um, so you might be wondering uh, why I'm up here. Uh, Molly, I guess, started. Um, you might think maybe I won a national title. No. Uh, maybe I, I got a 4.0. Definitely no. Um, but what I have had is uh, an incredible experience and journey that has led me to meet uh, so many of the incredible people that are sitting here right now. And uh, after five years here, I've roomed with four captains of different sports teams. Uh, and after four tear ACL tears and a couple shoulder dislocations, uh, I've met plenty of you guys in the training room. Um, you know, looking back, sure, I would have loved to avoid some of the obstacles, but uh, you know, uh, it really lets me have a special relationship with uh, the people here and everything that they do. Um, so Princeton Athletics creates a very close-knit community and it's inspired me to become a better student, athlete, and person. Uh, our motto is education through athletics, but I have not only gotten education through athletics, but also through the athletes themselves. Um, I've learned from Seth DeValve, if you do bicep curls every day for five years, you'll get drafted by the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> I've learned from Annie Tarakian that if you literally don't miss a three-pointer, your team goes 30-0. You know, but seriously, every day I spent with another athlete became another learning lesson. Every one of the athletes in this department has achieved incredible things just to be here. But my favorite thing about this department is the constant push to achieve more. You know, Princeton Athletics creates a higher standard of excellence. As college athletes, we all have a competitive drive. But seeing the incredible things that like, others achieve just drives us to do more. You know, and when I watched a field hockey team win uh, a national championship in 2012, I wanted to win one for myself. And when my roommate came back this year with an All-American trophy, I promised him and myself that at the end of the year, we'd have two. You know, achieve is the first pillar of, of the athletic department. And I just talked about a small percentage of the achievements that we've gone through. Uh, Molly got into a lot of them. And, and it's really incredible to see, uh, to be a part of this incredible athletic department. Um, when you look around at the achievements of our fellow athletes, you realize you're in a special place. Serve is the next pillar of the department. It's important to stop and be appreciative of how lucky we are to represent literally the best school in the world. You know, just look about how many people look about, like, think about how many people look up to us. It's, it's really easy to forget about that. And the department gives us so many opportunities to give back. And the way people here take advantage of this has inspired me to serve my community more as well. And finally, so serve your community, serve your parents who put in the countless hours at our games and practices to make being here possible. Yeah, give a, give a round of applause for sure. Serve your teammates who have now become your family. Serve your coaches who chose us to join their family and live and die by our performance. We didn't get here by ourselves and it's important to know that. And finally, serve the game. Serve the game you love. We don't get scholarships, we do this because we love it. A couple of weeks ago, my surgeon called me and he said, hey Chris, why do you love wrestling? And I said, I don't know, but I know I love it and I know I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> You know, and uh, I know I'm not the only one. I watched Chuck DeBilio suffer a stroke as a freshman and do everything he possibly could to get back on the field. I watched Kamal Brown suffer from a brain aneurysm and do everything he could. He never lost faith that he'd back, be back on that field hitting people. And I remember a conversation I had with Danny Hoy talking about how we don't, we don't really care that we don't have any spring break because we spend the spring break performing at, in the sport that we love. You know, it's, uh, every day I'm in the training room, the posit positivity is overwhelming and every person sacrificing their time, mind, and body is doing it because we love it. When our athletic careers come to a close, let's serve the next generation of athletes. Let's show them what it means to compete with passion, heart, and joy. And lead, our last pillar, and as we forge ourselves into the real world, it saddens me that I'm not going to be constantly surrounded
by these amazing people. But we do need to find is the people who display the same attributes that Princeton Athletics teaches us. This place churns out leaders. Princeton teaches you the traits of being a leader that don't get the recognition. It teaches us humility when we're thrusted into the hardest school in the country with the brightest people in the world. It teaches us steadfastness when we're running on fumes the days before our thesis are due. It teaches us stability, the ability to tolerate the frustration and the stress and still keep it together. Being a leader is a complicated task. Leadership requires a vision, the same way you envision scoring a goal, crossing the finish line, or raising a trophy over your head. Envision where you want to be in the future, then hold on to that and work for it the same way you work for your athletic goals. Leadership requires others. You, don't, you can't do it by yourself. Surround yourself with people who are going to maximize your effort and try to maximize theirs as well. Find the people who want to lead a path to success with you. Leadership requires courage. The real world is, world is scary, but attack it the same way you packed your bags and came to mix D1 athletics with rigorous academics. And there are different ways to lead. You could be a leader who is very present, very loud. You could be, lead quietly by example. You can lead by transforming the people around you, and you can lead by transforming yourself. The opportunities are endless. We most likely won't be able to replicate the incredible community of leaders that this place creates. But if we hold on to the lessons that Princeton has taught us, I'm extremely confident that each and every one of us will forge a path to success. Thank you very much.